everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with a stock squish and I'm here reviewing the last six weeks. If you had risked an advanced amount in your trades, what would you have made if you had been in the live trading room with me? So this is August to September. There was a bunch of days though, to be honest with you, that there weren't any trades. So it's very interesting in the in-between periods, there's four quarterly earnings seasons for trading where it's very active and there could be 30, 40, 50 good gaps on, on any given day or more. And even though I usually like to watch one, sometimes we'll do two, but we'll still usually mostly do one. But in between, sometimes there are days where there are no quality gaps. And the difference between a professional trader and someone that you know thinks and uses their head is that when there's nothing good, you can't force the stock to go. You don't do anything at all. But when you get a good one, when you get a great one, when you get a really good gap, guess what? You hit it and you hit it hard. And you'll see the ones here obviously that worked extremely well going over just the last six weeks. So this was a solid period because there were some really nice trades in this last six weeks, even though it was a slow period. So now we're getting into the busy period where every day should be huge and I really can't wait for October to start. And fall is a very nice time as well in New York. So this is me. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you wanna sign up for the next class. Email me if you have questions, call me 929-3200 GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. This was really one of the uh, biggest movers that we've seen recently, which was in September. This was an earnings gap, it was a late earnings. Um, but it had a giant mungo move, okay, almost 10 points on the day, and that is a big move even for this stock. And you can tell by the bars here looking back in the last few months that the bar that happened just on the 18th was the largest bar on this chart that we've seen here. Actually, this one over here looks kind of big. This was in March. I don't know the reason for that gap there, but the one that happened on the 18th was earnings. So this is the kind of thing we would be looking for in October to happen consistently and hopefully, you know, three to four or five times a week would be great. Anyways, going all the way back at the beginning of August, cake was a really nice gap, 6,870. Again, this is with, with an advanced risk. So I say around $1,500, even though some trades were slightly less in the risk, some were a little bit more. You'll see here with the few that did not work, cake was a nice winner, trip was a good winner, SYMC 2000. Off for a couple of days in August, DBX was a winner, QQQs was a winner, HD was a loser, QQQs was a winner on the 14th. Again, this is going back into August. M was a really nice gap, Macy's 2800, Walmart, two trades it took in Walmart to go. First one was a loser, second one was a nice winner in the Walmart. Still waiting for that stock to really turn around as a long at some point here between now and the end of the year. We'll see what the next earnings is on that stock. I'm watching that closely. 817DF was a loser. AMAT took two shots, one loser and one small winner. 820Qs were a loser. LEL was a loser. SPY was a winner. ETFC was a loser and HPE was a nice winner on the 21st. 22nd Target, again, took two shots. First trade was a loser. Second trade was a winner. LB was a nice short, nice winner on the 23rd. 24th with GPS, really nice gap. That was a good gap. 27th, no trades. SPY, one loser, one winner. DKS, one loser. And AEO was a nice winner on the 29th. Two days was not on for TV, uh, not in, in, the, in the room or running the room. I have an assistant that sometimes helps out. Uh, but for the month of September, I did take the period around the Labor Day off. Then came back, slow start to right after that period, the 10th, there were no trades. Babin was a loser on the 11th. Apple was a huge winner. Really big move in that. I went over that trade previously, but that was just such a wonderful one where I told everybody, you know, hold it all day. Some people did, some people didn't. The 12th, no trades. KR was a nice short, quick and easy on the 13th. Spy was a loser on the 14th. No trades on the 17th. FDX was the nice winner on the 18th. That was even a late entry. 19th, no trades. Red Hat was a loser. Qs were a winner on the 20th, and the 21st was UNFI. And that first morning trade actually was up. A lot of people got out, but I thought it would go more. Didn't. Lost in the first one in UNFI and then scalped it later in the day and for the profit. Uh, but that really reversed actually quite a lot. So 41,685. We'll see what the last week of September brings this coming week. And then, hooray, it's October, fall, earnings season, and a lots of good things coming up ahead. So 41,685, and again, there were many days in here, there were no good 
quality trades. So you've got to find the good ones. You've got to go with the good ones. And that's how you keep your losses down and you hold your money and keep your money from the winners, which you want to retain your money. You need to constantly, constantly, constantly be moving ahead. Now, you do not have to risk an advanced risk in these trades. What if you risk half of this amount, between $500 and $750 a trade? What if you only risk that? You would have made half this, okay? Still, to be able to make in six weeks 20-some grand is huge profit because most people are losing when they're trading. They have no idea what to do. So it's one of the huge benefits of being in the live trading room with me. I'm, I'm very skilled at doing this. I'm very skilled at seeing stocks trade live in, in seconds, in milliseconds, in minutes. I can see what they're going to do, and that's how I'm calling the trades. But in the morning, in the prep time, in that pre-market is really my, my best time where I can really see what's going to work and not. And I look at it and all that stuff, and I rate the gap in the pre-market history and determine for the open which stocks I'm going to watch that day. So it is absolutely a skill. It's a skill I've honed in on uh, to the point of you know perfection. And so the people that are able to be with me each day in the room are very, very lucky. You know, they've taken my golden gap class. I consider them serious people that are there to make money. And that's why they're there and they're following me. So if you'd like more information about my class to learn it, again, you learn the system and then you do it. Preparation today leads for, to success tomorrow. My class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's October 6th and 7th for, this is the class to do before the earnings season, okay? Because October and November are gonna be busy trading times. Class tuition is $54.99. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And though this was the last class was in September, but October 22nd is the trends course. So you'd be doing the October 6th and 7th golden gap. Then October 22nd was the trends class. So what the combo is the golden gap, which again, this date was the last class. The date for October's is October 6th and 7th here, just so there's no confusion. 